Accepting what can't be changed doesn't mean giving up and letting bad things happen to you. It means facing truth and finding ways to deal with it. This gives us more energy and focus to work on changing what we can, like how we think, what we do, and how we react to things that happen in our lives. Being able to listen with care and understanding is a revolutionary act of wisdom and self-understanding. Not only does listening, instead of talking, show respect for others, it's also a way to learn and be humble. In order to better understand the world and enjoy life, we need to quiet our own words and allow others to share their thoughts. When we listen carefully, we can learn about things, have experiences, and see the world from different points of view. This helps us grow as individuals and as a society. This stoic principle also teaches us how important it is to be patient and take our time. Slowing down while listening allows for more time for thought and reflection. This helps us respond with more thought and less emotion, which leads to better and deeper connection. Listening builds stronger relationships between people. When we are truly listened to you, we feel understood and validated. This builds a strong base for more honest and caring relationships at work and in our personal lives. Being able to listen is becoming more and more important for building stronger, more united groups in a world that is both more and less linked. Simply put, the first stoic principle, which says to listen instead of speaking, is a strong reminder of how important it is to actively listen. It challenges us to re-evaluate how we talk to and interact with other people, promoting a more considerate, compassionate and linked attitude toward the world around us. The second principle, which is a pearl of stoic wisdom, tells us not to not to see loss as a setback, but as a chance to learn and get better. Many of the ideas in this teaching come from Epicurus. It tells us to see mistakes as necessary steps on the way to greatness. This viewpoint provides a novel and helpful approach to adversity in a society that frequently stigmatizes mistakes. This idea tells us that failing is not the end, the end of the road, it is an important part of learning. Every mistake you make teaches you something important that you wouldn't have learned any other way. When we see failure as a teacher instead of an enemy, it changes how we feel about mistakes and turns them into strong tools for our personal and professional growth. Epicurus urges us to examine our errors with interest and openness, rather than with judgment or excessive self-criticism in his wisdom. This method helps us see not only what we did wrong, but also what we could do better next time. An attitude like this encourages ongoing change which pushes us to be the best. Also, when we accept that making mistakes is a normal part of the process, we build resilience and the courage to take on new challenges. This helps us be more flexible and ready for the changes and unknowns that come with life. In both your personal and business life, it's important to be able to get back up after failing and learn from your mistakes. When we fail, the second stoic principle tells us to see it as a chance to grow. It reminds us that the way to greatness is through the lessons we learn from our mistakes. We give ourselves the ability to move forward with more wisdom, resilience and confidence toward our goals and dreams by choosing this attitude. The third stoic principle suggests a practical way to deal with the unknowns in life. Get ready for the worst. This way of thinking is not negative at all. Rather, it supports a good way to deal with the stress and anxiety that we all experience from time to time. When we accept that the worst could happen, we mentally and emotionally get ready for anything that might happen. This builds strong resilience that lets us face the future with more confidence and calm. This theory doesn't say we should be afraid or negative all the time. Instead, it says we should accept that things change and we don't know what will happen next. We can make our minds stronger and more flexible by doing these things, so they can handle different situations. In order to feel less useless in the face of unforeseen challenges and changes, this approach aids in the development of backup plans and coping mechanisms. We learn to value and not take for granted the good and safe times when we get ready for the worst. Our gratitude and respect for life grow as a result of this knowledge. 
which also teaches us to live in the present with greater joy and passion. Because we know that problems and difficulties are part of everyone's life, this training also makes us more sensitive and understanding. Getting ready for the worst can also free us. It forces us to face our darkest fears, and when we do, they often lose some of their power over us. We become less nervous and better able to handle events as they come up when we face and accept potential adversity. To sum up, the third Stoic principle tells us to go into life with an open mind and a reasonable plan. We develop emotional and mental resilience as a result of this practice, which helps us deal with life's risks with more serenity and effectiveness. These things not only prepare us for challenges, but also help us enjoy the good things in life to the fullest. The fourth Stoic principle gives a critical view of wealth and its effects by warning about the possible risks of fortune. This theory stresses that while wealth is often desired and valued, it can also cause moral values to be distorted and people to become estranged from life's real joys. It is a strong warning to stay alert and careful, even when there is a lot of money. This concept doesn't say that wealth is bad in and of itself, but it does say that it shouldn't be the main goal of life, blocking out other important things like relationships, personal growth and service to others. Fortune can easily entice people with its promises of happiness and safety, but these claims are often false and only last for a short time. This concept from the Stoics reminds us that real happiness and pleasure don't come from getting more stuff. Instead, they come from living a good life with a purpose that is in balance with nature and other people. When you have money, you should use it to reach good goals, not as an end in itself. Recognizing that fortune is fleeting and that real wealth lies in character and human relationships, this teaching also supports the practice of temperance and gratitude. Being thankful for what we already have and being pleased with what we have keeps us from being hungry and always wanting more, which is a cycle that often leaves us feeling empty and unhappy. To sum up, the fourth Stoic principle is a warning about the bad things that can happen when you get rich and a call to live a more healthy and worthwhile life. It tells us to always be aware of our wants and needs and to make sure that our quest of material wealth doesn't take us away from the real sources of happiness and satisfaction. We can live more authentically, intently and satisfyingly by choosing this attitude. The fifth Stoic principle says that we shouldn't become stuck on a single hope or dream. In order to increase flexibility and resilience in a world that is constantly changing, this wise teaching suggests diversifying one's dreams and goals. This way of thinking helps us deal with change situations and find happiness in many parts of our lives. This concept acknowledges that becoming emotionally and mentally weak because of being fixated on a single goal or dream, when we put all of our energy and hope into one goal, we leave ourselves open to the ups and downs of luck and fate. If this goal isn't met, we might feel lost or disappointed and not be able to see other chances and openings. We build an emotional and mental safety net by having a variety of goals and objectives. We can stay calm and positive even if one road to happiness and joy ends because we know we have other ways to get there. This makes us more flexible and helps us handle the challenges of life with more balance and peace of mind. We also get more out of life when we have a lot of different hobbies and goals. Each dream or goal presents a unique chance to learn and grow. This helps us learn more things and gain more skills, which makes us better able to make a difference in the world and with the people around us. In short, the fifth Stoic principle tells us to have more than one hope or dream for our lives and to be open to having different ones. This way of thinking gives us more resilience in the face of uncertainty, which lets us find happiness and satisfaction in many areas of our lives. By doing this, we make our lives fuller, more interesting and rich. The sixth Stoic principle, which was influenced by Epictetus' thoughts, serves as a good lesson of what real wealth is. When we follow this message, we will understand that real wealth is not in things or having a lot of them, but in being happy and thankful. Focusing on gratitude for what we have, 
rather than complaining about what we don't, is crucial according to this concept. In a society that is often driven by shopping and the never-ending search for more, this point of view makes us think about our values and goals again. Real happiness comes from inside, as Stoic wisdom tells us. By learning to be happy with what we have, we can find inner peace and happiness that doesn't depend on what outside circumstances happen. As a result of this concept, we should have an attitude of gratitude toward life. This means that we should value and be thankful for the things we have, whether they are material things like clothes or relationships, experiences and personal accomplishments. We work on having a good mood, which makes our lives better. Being thankful makes us more open-hearted and helps us enjoy the little things and regular wonders. Additionally, by emphasizing gratitude and happiness, we, we become less vulnerable to the difficulties and challenges of life. Because we are aware that our happiness and tranquility are not dependent on outside factors, but rather are developed within, this position helps us to deal with disappointment and discouragement. The sixth Stoic principle, which was taught by Epictetus, basically says that real wealth is a happy and thankful heart. Through practicing gratitude and being happy with what we already have, we can stop always wanting more and find happiness and contentment in the good things that happen to us. This concept helps us live a better, happier and more worthwhile life. The seventh principle is a deep invitation to think about death and how short life is. We are reminded that our time in this world is short and unsure, and that every moment is valuable and shouldn't be lost. This concept tells us to look deeper than the selfishness and shallowness that rule our society. It tells us not to spend our time and energy on things and money that will disappear after we die. Instead, it tells us to put our time and energy into relationships and experiences that make our souls stronger. Knowing that we only have so much time means seeing each second as a chance to learn, grow, and make a difference in the world. It means realizing that what really makes us rich are the things we do, the lessons we learn, and the relationships we form with other people. This theory tells us to live more carefully and thoughtfully, looking for things that make us happy and give us long-lasting pleasure. It also tells us to make and keep relationships that are real and important. It tells us how important it is to build strong relationships with family, friends and the people in our community, especially in a world where exchanges are often shallow and short-lived. These connections are the real gems of life. They give you support, love and company when things are tough. When we realize that we are going to die, we are inspired to live with more purpose and desire, and we want to leave a good memory by making the world a better place in some way. By doing this, we might support social causes, work on creative projects, or just enjoy being with our loved ones. In short, the seventh Stoic principle tells us to enjoy every moment of our lives because the beauty of our lives comes from the important relationships and experiences we have. By following this concept, we can keep our attention on what's important and feel more satisfied and fulfilled in our lives. According to the eighth Stoic principle, we should try to become less attached to material things and outside events. This lesson, which was influenced by the writings of Marcus Aurelius, tells us that real freedom and happiness come from within, not outside. Being detached from things doesn't mean giving them up or living a life of lack. Instead, it means freeing our minds and emotions from being tied to them. When we care too much about material things, we can experience anxiety, stress and unhappiness. By learning to be detached, we can find more inner freedom and peace of mind that isn't tied to what's going on in the outside world. Because we are not mentally tied to results or expectations, we can deal with life's ups and downs with greater calm and serenity. Having a more open and removed view of life is another benefit of detachment. We don't connect with our material belongings or accomplishments. Instead, we see ourselves as spiritual beings who are not limited by time. Now that we understand this, we can live more honestly and without trying to impress other people or show how valuable we are through our things. 
At the same time, separation lets us focus on what's important in life, our relationships, our own growth, and how we can help others. When we stop worrying about material things, we can spend more time and energy on projects and activities that really excite and are important to us. To put it simply, the Eighth Stoic Principle tells us to become less attached to material things and outside events. We find more inner freedom and peace that doesn't depend on what's going on around us when we do this. This helps us live more honestly, happily and purposefully, which makes our lives and the lives of those around us better. The Ninth Stoic Principle is a strong warning of how important it is to accept the things we can't change and focus on the things we can. This teaching, which was influenced by Epictetus' thoughts, encourages us to adopt a serenity and acceptance-oriented outlook in the face of unavoidable circumstances. This idea tells us that real freedom and power come from being able to pick how to react to things, not from being able to control those things. We find more inner peace and mental balance when we stop fighting what is going to happen. Also, when we accept what we can't change, we have more energy to work on what we can do to make things better. Instead of spending time and energy thinking about things we can't change, this lets us take effective steps to change the things we can. The Ninth Stoic Principle tells us to accept the things we can't change and concentrate on the things we can. We find more inner peace, serenity and success in our lives when we do this. This helps us live more honestly and with a sense of purpose, making the most of our skills and resources to build a life that is important and satisfying. The Tenth Stoic Principle tells us how to deal with our feelings and stay calm in difficult or stressful conditions. This lesson, which was influenced by Seneca's thoughts, tells us that we are not helpless victims of our feelings. Rather, we have the ability to choose how to react. Being self-aware helps us feel our feelings as they come up, without judging them or pushing them down. By doing this, we can see our natural responses more clearly and choose how to act in a more thoughtful and helpful way. In times of worry or anxiety, mindful breathing is a strong tool that can help us stay cool and clear-headed. We can calm down the sympathetic nervous system and make the body and mind feel more relaxed by taking a few moments to focus on our breath and then breathing slowly. Additionally, practicing awareness helps us become more aware of and present in the current time. When we train our minds to focus on the present moment, we can break out of the circle of worry and ruminating that often comes with stress and anxiety. The Tenth Stoic Principle basically tells us how to control our feelings and stay calm when things get tough. We can develop greater mental clarity and emotional serenity in our lives by practicing self-awareness, thoughtful breathing and mindfulness. This makes it possible for us to deal with challenges and difficulties more skillfully, and to experience more happiness, contentment and peace in our lives. Moderation and balance are important in every part of our lives, as the Eleventh Stoic Principle tells us. This teaching, which was influenced by Epictetus' thoughts, encourages us to find a balance between two extremes, and to stay away from abuses that can cause pain and dissatisfaction. The practice of temperance helps us become more self-disciplined and in control of our lives. The more we learn to control our actions and wants, the more we can resist harmful urges and make smarter decisions. Moderation also helps us find a good balance between our wants and needs, so we don't go too far or too little. We can live happier, more fulfilling lives if we learn how to meet our needs in the right way. To put it simply, the Eleventh Stoic Principle tells us to live our lives in moderation and balance. By doing this, we develop more self-control and self-discipline and stay away from extremes that can cause pain and unhappiness. We can live with more unity, peace and happiness because of this. Being real and honest is very important in our lives, as the Twelfth Stoic Principle tells us. This teaching, which was influenced by Seneca's thoughts, encourages us to live by our inner values and principles, rather than putting our honesty at risk to please others or get money. Being honest with others helps us build real, important relationships with them. 
By being honest and open with each other, we build trust and respect, which is the basis for relationships that last and bring happiness. Being real also helps us live honestly and in line with our core values and principles. Because we are living in line with what really means to us, we feel more inner peace and happiness in our lives. To sum up, the Twelfth Stoic Principle tells us to be real and honest in every part of our lives. By doing this, we can build deeper, more enjoyable relationships with other people and find more peace and happiness in our own lives. If you want to live a full and worthwhile life, these 12 Stoic Principles can help we can develop greater mental clarity, emotional serenity, and happiness in our lives by incorporating these lessons into our daily lives, which will help us live with more authenticity, purpose, and joy, spread love and kindness every day. In this way, the seventh principle is a call to reflection and change. It challenges us to rethink our goals and pick a path that is consistent with our inner values. By doing this, we not only make our own lives better, but we also affect the lives of those around us, sending good waves that last long after we're gone. As the eighth principle says, humility is one of the most important things you can do to keep learning. It tells us that there is always more to learn and new points of view to study, no matter how much we think we know. This concept says that the key to real wisdom is not to learn as much as possible, but to keep your mind open to all the different ways you can learn and grow. When we are learning, being humble means realizing that what we know now is limited and temporary, and that the world around us is always changing. This means that we should be ready to question our views and opinions and be ready to change what we think is true. By doing this, we make room for new ideas and knowledge, which broadens our view of the world and helps us understand it better. This idea tells us to not only learn new things, but also to value other people's experiences and points of view. This idea says that everyone has something useful to share and that different ideas and experiences make learning more interesting. Being humble helps us learn to listen and see things from other people's points of view, which is important for our own growth and the growth of society as a whole. Being humble also helps us deal with our mistakes and failures in a healthy way. We don't have to be down or defensive when things go wrong. Instead, we can see them as chances to learn and get better. This way of thinking makes us stronger and more flexible, which are important skills in a world that is always changing. So, accepting humility as you learn is a path of self-discovery and growth. It tells us to learn more about ourselves and the world around us, so that we can understand life's beauty and complexity better. Being humble and interested in new things can lead to a life full of learning, growth and change. This concept helps us live more intentionally and with more awareness so we can keep learning in the school of life. Additionally, the ninth principle talks about the value of taking personal responsibility and being around people who inspire us to be our best selves. People have the power and responsibility to make choices that affect their own lives and the lives of those around them. This theory tells us of this. It stresses that becoming the best version of yourself is not a trip that you go on by yourself, but one that is made better and stronger by having other people with you and supporting you. Personal responsibility means realizing that we are the ones who make our lives what they are. This means that we have to be in charge of our actions, thoughts and feelings and know how they affect our health and the health of others. You should know yourself, think about the choices you make, and act in a way that fits with your core values and goals. It tells us to own up to our mistakes, learn from them, and make changes for the better. On the other hand, the principle also shows how important it is to be around people who push us to grow and inspire us. People who show us the traits and accomplishments we want to achieve can be teachers, friends, family, or co-workers. They are like windows that show us what is possible and inspire us to follow our dreams. With honesty and drive, the presence of these people in our lives makes it easier for us to grow and change throughout our lives. The tenth guideline talks about shame, which is a very important part of being human. It tells us to stay away from the crippling grip of guilt 
and instead take creative responsibility for our actions. This concept acknowledges that feeling guilty after making a mistake or failing is normal, but staying in that state can be harmful and stop you from growing as a person. We are told to take a more engaged and positive approach instead of letting guilt take over our lives. If you don't deal with your guilt, it can make you feel bad about yourself and make it hard to move on. The tenth principle tells us that while we all make mistakes, how we deal with them is more crucial. Instead of focusing on who is to blame, we should take what we've learned and use it to get better. This means that we have to admit when we're wrong, know what happens when we do, and fix our mistakes so they don't happen again. One important step in this process is to accept blame. It means taking an honest, unbiased look at what we did and how it affected other people. We don't try to explain or blame others for the things that happen or that we cause. Instead, we take responsibility for what we do. Not beating yourself up over this is not an act of self-flagellation. It is an adult awareness that can lead to positive change. The concept also says that instead of blaming, we should take good action and helpful reflection. We shouldn't blame ourselves by thinking about what we did. Instead, we should think about how we can get better and fix any damage we've done. This could mean saying sorry, getting things right, or just changing how we act so we don't make the same mistake again. To get past blame, you need to be kind to yourself. When we do this, we show ourselves the same compassion and kindness that we would give to a friend in the same position. We can learn to accept ourselves and keep on growing as people with more wisdom and resilience if we acknowledge that being human means having flaws. It tells us to own up to our mistakes, learn from them, and move on with a better, more responsible mindset. By doing this, we break free from the ties of guilt and open the way for a fuller, more real life that is always changing and getting better. A strong reflection on the nature of our responses and how they influence the course of our lives is provided by the 11th principle that makes the point even stronger. We can't change everything that happens to us, but we can choose how to react to it. The existence of challenges and failures in life is acknowledged by this concept. We all have hard times, whether they are in our daily lives at work or emotionally. This idea isn't about the problems themselves, though. It's about how we choose to deal with them. Every action we take, whether we are aware of it or not, is a choice that can either help us learn and grow or stay the same and suffer. The main point is that we need to become more aware and deliberate in how we respond. It's about learning to wait before responding, which will help us see things more clearly and pick the best thing to do. We can turn challenges into chances for growth and self-improvement by doing this. The principle also stresses how important it is to have a good and strong mood. This does not mean avoiding pain or difficulties. Rather, it means meeting them with strength and hope. We don't have to let bad feelings take over our lives. Instead, we can look for lessons in every situation and use them to boost our power and wisdom going forward. The eleventh principle also tells us to ask for help when we need it. Our responses are unique to us, but we don't have to go through our problems by ourselves. Help from friends, family or experts can provide fresh ideas and tools for overcoming adversity. Our lives start to change for the better as we get better at dealing with adversity in a healthy way. We grow as people and move closer to a future that fits our values and goals. When we make choices that we are aware of, it tells us to deal with adversity with knowledge, courage and hope, seeing each problem as a step toward a better and more fulfilling future. The twelfth principle stresses how important it is to always honor our tasks and responsibilities and do what we're supposed to do. This concept is a strong warning that what we do and choose affects not only our own lives, but also the lives of those around us and society as a whole. We are told to follow the best moral standards and be responsible for what we do and promise to do. To do our job, we must be aware of and uphold the duties we have toward ourselves, others and the group as a whole. 
Following a personal code of ethics that leads all of our interactions and decisions, it's not just meeting clear standards like job or family duties. It means being honest, keeping our word, and being there for those who count on us, both physically and mentally. Being honest and fair in everything we say and do, even when no one is looking is what it means to act honestly and with integrity. Living by the moral and ethical principles we hold dear is another aspect of integrity in addition to following the law. This means making the right choice even if it's the hardest one and sticking to our values even when other people try to get us to change them. The determination to do your best in everything you do despite difficulties and challenges is what we call dedication. It means putting in hard work and energy in our relationships at work and in our pursuit of our goals. We strive for greatness and quality in everything we do because we are dedicated to doing better all the time. This concept also tells us how important it is to take responsibility for our actions and the results of those actions. Individual responsibility is a key part of a fair and well-run society and we can all help make the world a better place. This means being aware of how our actions affect other people and the world around us and choosing to act in ways that support justice and well-being. The 13th principle talks about how important it is to have self-control and mental independence. It also talks about how important it is to learn to be unafraid of other people's opinions and behaviors. This principle encourages us to develop a serenity that is unwavering in the face of outward storms. It is a call to mental growth and inner strength. The ability to control one's own feelings, thoughts and behaviors, especially in challenging or upsetting circumstances, is referred to as self-control. It means being able to stay calm and collected even when you are being criticized, turned down or attacked. Self-control means being able to answer instead of reacting on the spot. This allows us to make deliberate and deliberate choices Beyond self-control, emotional liberty includes. It means becoming more independent on the inside, so our happiness and peace of mind aren't affected by what other people do or say. It means realizing that we can't change how other people act, but we can change how we react to it. When we have emotional liberty, we know that we are the only ones responsible for our feelings and that we can keep our inner balance no matter what is going on around us. We can learn from this idea that people's behaviors are often more about them than about us. Knowing this helps us not take personally every word or action that is said or done to us. We can choose to deal with things with understanding, kindness and an open mind instead of giving in to our anger, bitterness or sadness. It takes time and practice to learn self-control and mental independence. Mindfulness methods, in-depth reflection, therapy, and the search for greater self-awareness may all be part of this. It could also mean learning how to set healthy limits and leaving bad situations or relationships to the future that keep making us feel bad inside. It's not in the 13th principle that we should not care about other people or be uncaring. On the contrary, becoming more emotionally stable makes us better able to offer real support, care and understanding. In a better and more useful way, this lets us be present and open to others. Sticking to the 14th principle, which says that living a simpler, more focused life is the way to a better, more worthwhile life, shows how important it is to be simple. This principle isn't just about getting rid of unnecessary things or lowering the number of things we own. It's also a call to rethink our values, goals and how we spend our time and energy. To live simply you have to choose to do less but better, knowing that having too many things often takes our attention away from what really counts is what this is about. By getting rid of the unnecessary and focusing on what's important, we make room for the thing that really make our lives satisfying and joyful like relationships, experiences, personal growth and giving back to the community. It's also about being able to think clearly and cutting down on unnecessary information and stimulation to get back to peace of mind and focus in a world full of messages and requests. Choosing simplicity is a good idea. 
In this case, limited media use, making time for meditation and reflection, or just slowing down to enjoy the current moment are all possible options. Adopting a simple way of life doesn't mean giving up comforts. Instead, it means finding happiness in the simplest and most lasting things in life. It's a choice for a life with fewer distractions and more focus, where choices are based on what really makes life worth living. Our natural impact is smaller when we choose more carefully and consume less. This also helps make decisions, the system more fair and sustainable. This shows that we care about more than just our own health. We care about the health of future generations and the health of the world as a whole. Being simple also teaches us to be thankful for what we have, and instead of always wanting more, we can find happiness and respect in life by appreciating and loving what we already have. Finding joy in the small everyday things is made possible by this attitude of gratitude, which also makes us happier and more fulfilled. The 14 principles tell you everything you need to know to live a full and worthwhile life. We can live a more true and satisfying life by practicing kindness, compassion, humility, personal responsibility, ongoing education, overcoming guilt, being aware of our responses, doing our jobs honestly and devotedly, self-control, emotional independence and simplicity. These principles push us to think about what we do to always get better and to look for happiness and satisfaction in everything we do. For ourselves and others, we can make the world a more caring, aware and peaceful place by following these principles every day. This is very important for having a fuller and more interesting life. To sum up, the 14th principle tells us to look for simplicity as a way to get rid of unnecessary things and concentrate on what's important. By doing this, we not only make our own lives better, but we also help make the world more healthy and fair. The 15th principle emphasizes the value of emotional resilience and encourages us to learn how to keep our inner calm and serenity, even when we are confronted with external stress. This principle acknowledges that life is full of challenges and that we will surely come across people and events that test our emotional and mental equilibrium. However, we should not let these things bring us down. Instead, we should work on building an inner power that will keep us steady and focused. The capacity to quickly rebound from difficulties and adjust to change while remaining composed and focused is known as emotional resilience. This doesn't mean ignoring or hiding our feelings. It means being aware of them, knowing them, and learning how to handle them well. We are less likely to act on impulse and more likely to handle bad events with care and wisdom when we build emotional resilience. An important part of this concept is ignoring other people's bad moods. A lot of the time, other people's mean words and attitudes are caused by their own problems, not ours. Being aware of this helps us keep our inner peace and not take things personally. But this doesn't mean we shouldn't care about other people's pain. It does mean we should take care of our own energy and mental health so we can be a good and stable presence for others and ourselves. Meditation, mindfulness and reflection are all activities that help us become more aware of our thoughts and feelings and help us keep our inner peace. The 15th principle also tells us that mental resilience is a skill that can be learned and improved over time. It takes a lot of work and a dedication to learning about yourself and growing. We can turn our most trying situations into chances, to gain even more strength and wisdom by meeting our fears, challenges and doubts with courage and openness. By learning to ignore other people's bad moods and keep our own peace, we not only make our own lives better, but we also become a source of strength and inspiration for those around us. The 16th principle talks about how valuable friendship is and how real relationships are much more valuable than any kind of money. This principle tells us that things can make us feel better in the short term, but real friends are what make our lives better in the long term. One of the best ways to connect with other people is through friendship. True friends help us when we need them, accept us for who we are, and share our happiness and sadness. They bring us happiness, motivation and comfort, and they frequently assist us in overcoming life's greatest challenges. 
because the quality of our friendships is one of the best ways to tell if we're living a full and rich life. This principle tells us to value and care for these relationships. The 16th principle not only talks about how important friendship is, but it also asks us to think about how we set priorities in a world where getting more stuff is often seen as a sign of success. People tell us that real wealth comes from relationships and sharing love. This principle challenges us to think about what we really value and to try to find a better balance between material things and building deep, important relationships with others. Friends are very valuable because they help and comfort you, because they understand our problems, and they, they can give us good advice and a new point of view when we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. When we're sad, our friends are there to listen and comfort us. When we're happy, they are the ones who laugh and celebrate with us. This network of social support is very important to our mental health and our ability to deal with the bad things that happen in life. It takes time, work and commitment to build real bonds. Listening with understanding and kindness as well as behaving with care and presence are all parts of this. Being a real friend also means giving the same amount of love and support that you hope to receive. This principle tells us to take the initiative to make our friendship stronger by putting in time and effort to build these important bonds. The 17th principle brings up an important piece of wisdom for inner peace and well-being. We should focus our attention and energy on what we can control and learn to accept what we can't change. This message is very important for lowering stress and anxiety and making our lives more peaceful and balanced. Focusing on what we can change means being aware of and accountable for our own thoughts, words and actions. We waste a lot of time and energy thinking about things that are out of our control like other people's choices or the way their lives are going. Moving that effort to things we can really change like our attitudes, choices and behaviors is what this principle tells us to do. Not only does this make our own lives better, but it also sets a good model for others. Accepting what we can't change, on the other hand, means realizing that there are things in life like other people's actions, results and world events that we can't change. Acceptance doesn't mean giving up or being passive. It means seeing things clearly and rationally without letting them bother us or control our emotions. When we accept what we can't change, we let go of the tightness and stress that come from fighting reality. This lets us react in more flexible and creative ways. Mindfulness and meditation techniques which help us stay in the present and become more aware of our thoughts and feelings are frequently used in conjunction with acceptance methods. This lets us watch our inner responses without judging them and with kindness which makes it easier to accept and let go. Being aware of and accepting the things we can't change makes us more adaptable and able to handle life's challenges and overcome them with a more focused and calm attitude. By using this strategy, we not only find more peace and balance in our daily lives, but we also get ready to deal with uncertainty and difficulties in a better and healthy way. If you want to live a more peaceful and happy life, full of acceptance, resilience and focus on the present, this concept is the key. Even when things are really bad, the 18th principle is a strong warning that there are still chances to improve and grow. It tells us to keep a positive attitude and look for the good and teachable parts of every situation, even those that involve adversity and hardship. In addition to telling us to get past problems, this principle also tells us to use them as stepping stones to reach better levels of happiness and knowledge, it takes a shift in perspective to see potential in adversity. Instead of focusing on the bad things that happen in a tough situation, we should look for the chances to learn and grow that it presents. Every struggle is an opportunity to grow as a person and improve yourself. We can improve our skills, see things from different angles, and become stronger as people by meeting problems with courage and drive. There is also a strong emphasis on resilience and flexibility in this concept. Our ability to bounce back quickly from adversity while keeping a positive mood and the drive to keep trying is known as resilience. On the other hand, being flexible lets us change our plans and tactics as needed, seeing change as a part of growing. 
All of these traits help us deal with the unknowns in life and find meaning in every situation. The 18th principle also tells us to look for motivation and support from people who have faced adversity. We build a network of support amongst ourselves that bolsters and motivates us by sharing our experiences and lessons learned from overcoming adversity. This not only helps us deal with our own problems, but it also lets us help other people grow and be healthy. We can grow our gratitude and positivity by always looking for the good in things. Focusing on the good, even when things are bad, helps us develop an outlook of gratitude and wealth that makes our lives better. Because of this, we are stronger in the face of adversity and more receptive to the good things and chances that every day brings. By using this strategy, we turn challenges into opportunities for growth, building resilience, adaptability, and a positive attitude that helps us reach our goals and feel fulfilled. The 19th principle challenges us to accept what we can't change, which is a lesson in wisdom and serenity. This concept is a strong warning that many things in life are out of our control, no matter how hard we try or how much we want them. Things that happen in the world, other people's acts, and the bigger forces that create it, often happen on their own, regardless of what we do or how we feel. Realizing and accepting things we can't change is not a sign of weakness or giving up. It shows that you are mature and understand the situation. We have the power to use our freedom and control where it counts most when we pay attention to how we act and respond. You should focus on making yourself better, acting in an honest way, and making smart decisions instead of worried about the unknowns and unpredictabilities of life. There is a lot less stress and anxiety when we accept the things we can't change. This is because we let go of our false standards and the need to control everything. There is peace and happiness in what we can change in accepting life as it is and being able to handle its ups and downs with resilience and flexibility. In addition, this concept teaches us to have more kindness and understanding since we can't control other people. We learn to accept people for who they are with all of their problems and paths. When respect and understanding are core values, this leads to better relationships and a society that works better together. When we accept what we can't change, we are more likely to live in the present and enjoy each moment and the chances it brings instead of dwelling on fears about the future or regrets about the past. In a nutshell, the 19th principle is a call to acceptance and serenity. In the face of change, we can live more healthy and happy lives by accepting the things we can't change and focusing on the things we can. This will help us develop resilience, kindness and wisdom as we go through life. This concept is like a compass that helps us find our way through life's storms. It reminds us that we can't change the wind, but we can adjust our boats. Live in harmony with nature is the 20th principle which asks you to connect deeply with yourself and the world around you. This idea isn't just about nature in the surroundings. It's also about the nature inside each of us and the way the universe is supposed to be. It means being aware of and considering our own wants, skills and boundaries, as well as knowing where we fit in the bigger picture of life. Knowing yourself well is the first step to living in harmony with nature. It's a call to find out who we really are without masks or society standards. To do this, we need to understand our feelings, fears, wants and everything else that makes us who we are. In this way, we can start to make choices and actions that are in line with who we really are, living in an honest and complete way. This idea also tells us to be aware of and respect our mental and physical boundaries. Knowing and agreeing with these boundaries is not a restriction. It's a way to make our lives more harmonious instead of going against who we are. We try to find ways to work with it, so that our lives are more fair and less difficult. Living in harmony with nature also means realizing that we are a part of something bigger. We know that each living thing in the world plays a part in the environment and makes a contribution. In turn, this makes people value and respect nature and all living things more. We become more aware of how our actions affect people other than ourselves and we start to live more carefully and wisely. Life is a circle of growth, change and rebirth. 
which is another thing this principle tells us of. We are called to accept and welcome the changes in our lives, seeing them as natural chances to grow and learn, just like the seasons change, and nature adapts. We often hurt because we don't want to accept these changes. We can be more peaceful and happy if we go with the flow of life. The 20th principle basically tells us to respect and live in balance with our essence and the world around us. It says to know and understand our nature and the nature around us. We can live in a way that is more real, healthy and aware. The 21st principle says that the road of virtue is enough to live a full and meaningful life. This concept stresses that the only way to find real happiness and satisfaction is to work on developing and practicing the important virtues, not to get things or short-lived pleasures. Stoic ideals like temperance, courage, wisdom and fairness are not only great traits, they are also the building blocks of a good life. The value of wisdom is knowing what is good, what is bad and what doesn't matter. It's about learning how to discern and make choices that are in line with our values. Ethical virtues are important for living a full and worthwhile life, but they take time and effort to develop. When we follow the road of virtue, we become more true to ourselves and more spiritual. We live in line with our values and make the world a better place for everyone. This idea tells us that real wealth is not in things we own, but in the things we are. Focusing on building our character and fostering morals gives us a deeper and longer lasting sense of happiness than any financial thing could. For short, the road of virtue leads to a meaningful and happy life in which our actions are in line with our core values and we make the world a better place for everyone. A deeper and more important part of wisdom is realizing that we can't control everything and that we have to accept life as it is with all of its unknowns and changes. The ability to meet challenges, get over fears and stick to our beliefs in the face of adversity is known as courage. To do the right thing, stand up for our views and act in line with our principles, even when it is hard or unpopular, takes more than just physical strength. Being tolerant means having self-control over your wants and needs. It means being able to act moderately, controlling your feelings and hunger, so that you can live a healthy and happy life. The 21st principle tells us that material things and pleasures may make us happy for a short time, but ethical living gives us permanent happiness and meaning as we seek and show these traits in everything we do. We not only make our own lives better, but we also make other people smile and be happy. Living a good life means always learning and growing. It takes self-discipline, constant reflection, and a desire to face our flaws and limits. But this route has infinite benefits. When we accept that virtue is enough, we find a source of happiness and satisfaction that is real, deep, and always fulfilling. Life is full of storms and unknowns, but this principle always reminds us that what counts is who we choose to be and how we choose to live. A state of tranquility of mind called ataraxia is urged upon in the 22nd principle. The main idea behind Stoic philosophy is to find deep and lasting inner peace, a serenity that doesn't change no matter what life throws at you or the challenges you face. Ataraxia is not about hiding or ignoring your feelings. It's about learning to understand, accept and deal with them in a calm and sensible way. Recognizing that feelings are normal reactions to what we see and experience is the first step toward finding inner serenity. We shouldn't try to control or judge them. Instead, we should watch them with interest and understanding. Ataraxia is when we realize that we can't control what happens in the outside world, but we can control how we react to it. That is, you should learn to deal with things with a calm and clear mind instead of acting on impulse. By putting some space between ourselves and our unconscious responses, we can choose answers that are in line with our core values and goals by engaging in awareness and reflection. Virtues like wisdom, bravery and temperance should also be developed as an important part of ataraxia. Knowing what's important lets us put our energy where it can make the most difference. Courage gives us the ability to face difficulties head-on and stay calm, even when we are scared or unsure. 
Lack of temperance can throw off our balance and make us feel bad, which can ruin our peace of mind. Practicing gratitude and acceptance is also an important part of keeping ataraxia going. Being thankful for the lessons and gifts we've learned from everything and accepting the things we can't change sets us free from the chains of sorrow and desire, letting us live with more respect and real peace. It's important to remember that ataraxia is not a state of emotional disinterest or separation. Instead, it's a way of fully engaging with life where feelings are fully felt, but not allowed to control our actions or determine our health. Constant reflection is suggested as a powerful and life-changing practice in the 23rd principle. As part of this habit, you should think about your deeds, your plans and your actions, and your life in general every day. It is a challenge to take a close look at yourself, ask yourself if your actions are good and useful, and find places where you can grow and get better. This exercise makes you more self-aware and more self-disciplined, which makes your life better and your relationships with other people better. Self-reflection is a time to be honest with yourself. Every night take some time to think about what you did and the choices you made. You should ask yourself, do the things I did today show my virtues and values? Could I have done something better? What can I do better tomorrow? This exercise isn't meant to make you feel guilty or sorry for what you did. Instead, it's meant to help. You see both wins and mistakes as chances to learn and grow. You gain a better understanding of your motives and behaviors through this practice of self-examination. You will start to see patterns in the way you react and make decisions over time. Some of these patterns may be good for you and help you reach your goals, while others may need to be changed. You have the chance to purposefully change your future actions so that they are more consistent with your goals and principles by becoming more aware of these habits. This can really push you to keep doing things that are in line with your long-term goals and the kind of person you want to be. For overcoming challenges and avoiding short-term desires that can throw you off track, self-discipline formed through constant reflection is a crucial tool. You stop seeing yourself as a set, unchanging person and start seeing yourself as someone who is always changing, always able to learn and get better. Your resilience, ability to handle loss and willingness to take chances and face new challenges can all improve as a result. Daily reflection makes you more aware of what you're doing and gives you more control over how your life is shaped by your core values. This daily practice will help you learn more about yourself, be more disciplined and keep growing, which will make your life better and more satisfying. The 24th principle asks us to change how we think about adversity. Instead of seeing it as bad fortune, we should see it as a useful chance to show traits and get stronger. As a result of this concept, we should be bold and positive about challenges, seeing them as opportunities to grow and get better. It takes a major shift in our perception of and response to difficulties in order to see them as chances. We are told not to let failures and challenges make us feel down or beaten, but to see them as opportunities to grow our inner strength, wisdom and resilience. Every problem we face turns into a test, a chance to use and improve our good qualities like bravery, patience and courage, persistence and the ability to change. This principle recognizes that while we may not have control over outward situations, we do have control over our reactions to them, which does not downplay the pain or trouble that adversity can bring. When we choose to react with a growth and learning-oriented mindset, we can turn possibly bad situations into useful lessons and chances to get better. We gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and others when we view adversity as a learning opportunity, we come to value the process of overcoming and see the power in meeting and overcoming challenges. We can also help and understand others when they are having a hard time because we know how important it is to keep going and be brave. This point of view also motivates us to work on our personal growth, even when things aren't going well. When we have a constant growth attitude, we are always looking for ways to push our limits, do new things and get out of our comfort zone. When adversity eventually hits, this makes us stronger and more prepared. 
We take on a strong, open and optimistic stance when we view adversity as a chance. This not only makes it easier for us to face challenges, but it also helps us get the most out of each one, turning each one into a stepping stone to becoming a smarter, stronger and more moral person. The 25th principle tells us to be whole and aware, and to live in the moment. Stoic philosophy recognizes how important it is to plan for the future, but it also stresses how important it is to live in the present. Focus on the job at hand and enjoy life as it happens. This principle tells us to stop worrying too much about the future and feeling bad about the past, so that we can fully enjoy the present. To live in the present, we have to focus our attention and energy on the here and now and enjoy the experiences and chances it gives us. It means giving our all to whatever we're doing, whether it's working, talking to other people, or just getting some rest and relaxation. By doing this, we not only become more productive and happy, but we also find more peace and joy within ourselves. We shouldn't ignore the past or the future because of this concept. Learning from the past and making plans for the future are both important parts of life. The Stoics, on the other hand, tell us that the moment is the only world we really have control over. Anxiety and unhappiness can result from thinking too much about the future or feeling bad about the past, which diverts our attention from the present. To live in the present, we have to accept and enjoy life as it is, not how we would like it to be. This means recognizing and accepting the world as it is, with all of its flaws and beauty. By living in the present, we can find the peace and happiness that come from knowing that we can't control everything, but we can always change how we think and feel about things. A strong way to improve your ability to live in the present is to practice awareness. Mindfulness techniques like meditation, mindful breathing and mindful observation can help us keep our minds and bodies in the present, which makes it less likely that we'll get lost in fears about the future or regrets about the past. By living in the present, we see the beauty and possibilities in every moment. We let go of anxiety about the future and sorrow about the past, and we find a place to grow, learn and appreciate every hour. One of the most important Stoic philosophers, Musonius, gave us very helpful advice on how to live a healthy and happy life through moderation. His philosophy stresses that overindulging, whether in food or other things, can be bad and cause mental and physical problems, as well as faster wear and tear. Moderation is not just an idea. It is an important part of a history philosophy that says self-control and discipline are the keys to success and a full life in every way. Musonius tells us to find a middle ground between having too much and not having enough. When you do too much of something that makes you feel good in the short term, it can hurt you physically, cause health problems and make you feel guilty or regretful. On the other hand, too much restriction can be bad too. It can make you angry and make you want to give in later. So he tells us to find a middle ground where we can enjoy food and drinks in a way that makes us happy without going overboard, making the experience positive instead of negative. Moderation is a way of life that involves self-control and discipline. It not only leads to personal success and well-being, but it also makes our actions more harmonious and helps us reach our goals and dreams in a more rewarding way. Remember that balance is an important part of life's music and a trait that, when put together, makes life richer and more complete. Stoicism, a philosophy that values inner strength and self-reliance, has as one of its guiding principles the prohibition of disparaging oneself. That means you should never have depressing thoughts or talk to yourself. Aurelius, a ruler and historical philosopher, told us that we shouldn't worry about ourselves, even if we don't say anything. This is important for maintaining mental health and self-confidence. Because thinking negative thoughts like, I'm terrible at that, or I'll never get better all the time hurts self-esteem and makes you less motivated. To be fully aware of our inner conversation, we need to follow the road of Stoicism. As opposed to putting ourselves down, we should work on recognizing our potential and skills. Developing a mindset that lets us be sure of our strengths and growth opportunities. 
We can improve our self-confidence and resilience by actively choosing a positive, growth-focused attitude. This method, which is based on ancient philosophy, tells us that how we talk to ourselves is the first step towards self-control. Adopting an uplifting and inspiring inner dialogue is one of the most important things we can do to build a strong and successful attitude. The way to self-fulfillment and happiness according to Stoicism is heavily influenced by how we perceive and deal with challenges. We give ourselves the power to face challenges with confidence and learn from them by adopting a mindset that encourages self-affirmation and an awareness of our strengths. This strengthens the base on which we build our self-confidence and emotional resilience. Following Stoic wisdom, in short, entails developing a positive and helpful inner dialogue in line with the Stoic's principles of inner strength and personal growth. Epictetus, a famous Stoic philosopher, gives thoughtful advice on how to improve oneself. He says that we should be humble and careful as we try to become better. He says we shouldn't shout our successes and progress to the four winds. Instead, he says, we should let our deeds and changes in character show how much we've grown. True self-improvement is a trip that you take for your own good, not to get praise or attention. Leo Epictetus says that if we talk about our actions all the time, we might lose sight of how sincere our goals are. True personal growth is not mirrored in the things we say, but in the visible and real changes that occur in our behavior, character and mindset. Most growth should be an ongoing, separate process, focused on our individual unfolding, not a search for outward approval. By taking this method, we let our successes and growth happen on their own, which can ultimately inspire and help other people more than any big statement. Following Epictetus' wisdom, the way to self-improvement is one of modesty and respect. During that trip, we let our actions and results speak for themselves. This was a more honest and powerful way to show how we've grown and how we've helped others. Epicurus' teachings and philosophy make the point that gratitude is an important part of both personal happiness and good ties with other people. Recognizing and appreciating what we have, instead of feeling bad about what we don't have, is a strong habit that makes everyday life better. A lack of appreciation for the kindness of others or a propensity to undervalue the little things that make life comfortable and happy can be minor signs of an unappreciative attitude. On the other hand, practicing gratitude makes you actively notice and value all the good things in your life, no matter how big or small they are. This includes opportunities that come up and acts of kindness. Not only does showing gratitude make our lives more meaningful, it also makes our relationships stronger and better, making everyone feel important and loved. When we show lack of gratitude in our daily exchanges, we might push people away, hurt relationships, and make a space where people feel unhappy and unimportant. Expressing gratitude, on the other hand, creates strong ties and good relationships, making the space emotionally supportive and fostering a sense of shared appreciation. Because of this, it is very important to practice gratitude every day, not just for material things, but also for the support, kindness and love we receive. By focusing on the good things in life, we not only make our own lives better, but we also make our relationships with others stronger, creating an atmosphere of trust and respect. Being grateful is more than just being polite. It's a way to connect with others and grow emotionally. It's a key part of living a fuller, more satisfying life. Stoicism, which is portrayed as ancient wisdom, has a strong resonance in today's society. It's designed that way, so let's listen more than speak. In today's world where everyone wants to be heard, this advice is straightforward and prompts thoughtful reflection on how we connect and communicate. It's important to practice active listening. Giving your full attention to words, feelings and body language while listening carefully is more than just hearing. As we listen carefully, we show respect and appreciation for the thoughts and experiences of others, which can make relationships stronger and communication better in all situations. In the end, being helpful to others and listening are the most important. 
also helps our own growth and development by letting us actively take in new ideas and points of view, which broadens our horizons and helps us make better choices. Wisdom tells us that being a good listener takes awareness. Real respect and conscious intelligence in a world that often values self-expression and being seen. When we develop this skill, it not only improves our exchanges and relationships, but it also opens doors to stronger and more significant career and personal growth. When we're in the middle of a talk, let's remember how listening can change things and find a stronger link and a way to grow personally that is more satisfying. Our minds and how we choose to interpret and react to the world around us play a significant role in how happy we are. Because of this, whining reveals itself to be a circle of futility. Most of the time it doesn't lead to answers or good change. Instead, it makes people feel like they're being victimized and powerless, which makes them more stressed out and frustrated. Constantly complaining can hurt our relationships by wearing down the people we're with. However, deciding not to worry and focused on the good things in life can change our lives, enhancing mental health, lowering stress and boosting emotional resilience. People are naturally drawn to positive people, which makes relationships stronger. It also boosts productivity, since whining takes our attention away from finding answers and taking action, which makes us more efficient. It encourages gratitude, which can make us happy and satisfied. Being mindful means being aware of our thoughts and feelings, looking for answers instead of dwelling on the problem and making it a habit to show gratitude every day. Let us remember what Marcus Aurelius said. The key to happiness is in the way we think and feel. Stoicism urges us to think carefully about when to speak and when to be quiet with its concept of choosing silence. This way of thinking can greatly improve our personal growth and our relationships with other people. Not everything we feel or think has to be said. Selective silence can help us live our lives with more purpose and wisdom, which will lead to a better and more important experience of it. Continue to learn about this deep philosophy because it has lessons that can help us find power, wisdom and peace within ourselves. How often do we find ourselves engaged in conversations without truly considering the impact of our words? In the heat of the moment, it's easy to give in to the impulse to speak up without weighing the consequences. Who hasn't found themselves in a situation where they said something without thinking and then felt the weight of embarrassment? Or maybe you've shared something too personal and wondered what others think right now. These moments reveal the importance of an often overlooked skill, silence. Stoicism, an ancient philosophy, not only invites us to control our words, but also to value the power of silence. Today, we're going to explore how silence can strengthen our daily interactions, protect our relationships and cultivate our own inner peace. And if you're looking to strengthen your capacity for reflection, cultivate deeper relationships and achieve lasting inner peace, this is the channel for you. Here we explore the timeless teachings of Stoicism, guiding you towards a more mindful and balanced life. Sign up now and join our community of wisdom seekers. Let's get started. From the moment we are born, we are encouraged to express ourselves. A baby's first words are celebrated with joy by their parents or guardians. However, we are rarely taught throughout life about the potency of silence. Being quiet isn't just an absence of words, it's a space full of meaning and power. Silence can reveal a lot about us, our intentions and our essence. It is a sign of respect both to others and to the environment around us. When we choose to listen instead of talking incessantly, we show a deep regard for the other. A practice that is far more impactful than trying to impose our opinions on those who are unwilling to listen. By talking too much, often without purpose or clarity, we sap our own strength and contrary to what we might imagine, we end up making ourselves insignificant and sometimes debased in the eyes of others. Replacing the desire to speak with the desire to listen can be the key to our personal development. In social interactions, we can apply the stoic virtues of prudence and wisdom to our own to enhance and minimize many of our relationship problems. Consider the example of two salespeople, Bred and Marco, 
whose approaches are diametrically opposed. While bread is long-winded, Marco knows the value of silence. When a customer walks into the store, Bread readily offers discounts that weren't asked for, which results in less commission for them, and often the customer dropping off who feels pressured. Marco, on the other hand, acts shrewdly. He listens first, asks intelligent questions, and finds out what the client really wants before he speaks. In this way, he not only sells more products, but also gains the trust and loyalty of customers. The lesson here is that listening more than talking is a secret not only to success in sales, but to life as a whole. As an example, let's think about situations in our lives where talking too much has hurt us. Do a mental exercise now. Remind yourself of three times when you missed opportunities or caused problems because you couldn't shut up. This habit of compulsive speaking can be changed with practice and self-discipline fundamental concepts in Stoicism. The philosopher Epictetus, for example, taught that we have two ears and one mouth so that we can hear twice as much as we speak. It reminds us of the importance of valuing active listening, which empowers us and makes us wiser. Dread could learn self-control, the ability to wait and listen before reacting impulsively. Resilience is like a remote control that allows us to moderate our reactions. It teaches us not to overdo it not to talk too much and not to act without thinking. Wisdom, on the other hand, is like a map that guides us in the right direction, indicating when it is the right time to speak or act. Marco has already learned how to navigate with this map, and this puts him in a position of advantage. In addition to being a practical tool, silence can be cultivated with grounding techniques, which strengthen mental connections between external stimuli and internal responses. Consider creating a mental anchor. It could be a physical object such as a bracelet or a phrase on your phone screen such as talk less. Each time you see this reminder, you create a mental association with a state of tranquility and introspection. This repetitive practice helps train your brain to value silence and the wisdom it brings. When you feel like you're about to speak unnecessarily, remember your anchor. Pause, breathe, and choose the path of silence and listening. In this way, you will not only strengthen your relationships and improve your social interactions, but you will also cultivate a stoic spirit, ready to face life with more wisdom and serenity. Reflecting on the role of silence in our lives is key to a deeper understanding of ourselves and our interactions. Silence is not just the absence of words, but a form of communication that can reveal a lot about our intentions and character. It allows us to listen to really listen, and not just to listen passively. By practicing silence, we realize that our words, when used sparingly, take on greater weight and significance. As Seneca stated in his letters, it is quality and not quantity that matters. When we choose our words carefully, each of them resonates with more strength and purpose. Not sharing all our plans and thoughts is a lesson in self-control and wisdom. Often when talking about our intentions, we seek approval or encouragement, but we run the risk of weakening our resolve. Psychological science supports this view. By verbalizing our goals, we experience a premature sense of accomplishment that can demotivate us. Keeping our plans private gives us an advantage, allowing us to work on them with focus and determination. As Epictetus teaches us, first learn the meaning of what you say and then speak. Keeping our plans to ourselves is not hiding, but rather protecting what is still in the growth phase. Emperor Marcus Aurelius in his meditations reminds us of the danger of blindly trusting everyone around us. It's not just the possibility of conscious sabotage, but also the subtle influence of criticism and negativity that can lead us astray. When we keep silent, we preserve our power and shield ourselves from outside influences that can harm us. Marcus Aurelius warns us, the soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Therefore, by carefully selecting those with whom we share our dreams, we protect the purity and integrity of our aspirations. Seneca, in his reflections on friendship, stresses the importance of choosing with discernment those in whom we trust. 
True friendship is rare and precious, a safe ground where we can share our dreams without fear. However, prudence is necessary as not everyone around us genuinely desires our success. Sharing our triumphs and aspirations only with those who sincerely support us strengthens and motivates us. Aristotle also emphasizes that the friend is a second self, indicating the depth and importance of authentic and trusting bonds. Stoicism invites us to look beyond appearances and focus on what really matters, our moral and spiritual development. The practice of silence allows us to avoid the dictatorship of reaction, a concept that Epictetus addresses when talking about the importance of not getting carried away by other people's opinions or external events. Instead, we should focus on our inner growth. Each time we avoid forming an opinion or expressing a judgment about others, we gain more time and energy to invest in ourselves and our personal development. This practice frees us from constant worrying about what others think and helps us maintain inner peace. Taking a more reserved approach also improves our relationships. By avoiding snap judgments and unnecessary opinions about others' choices, we cultivate an environment of mutual support and respect. Focusing on our own lives and using our time to support, rather than criticize, creates stronger, healthier bonds. This teaches us to value the actions and efforts of others, fostering an environment of growth and encouragement. Training yourself to control thoughts and words is a powerful skill that Stoicism teaches us. Marcus Aurelius in his meditations reminds us that we have the power to be unaffected by external events. You have power over your mind, not over external events. Realize this and you will find strength. This wisdom encourages us to adopt a more reflective and less reactive stance, allowing us to remain calm and clear in any situation. The practice of silence and introspection offers us a deeper insight into ourselves and the world around us, guiding us into a state of serenity and lasting purpose. The power of silence is not just a communication technique, but a philosophy of life that allows us to navigate the complexities of existence with wisdom and grace. By adopting silence as our first language, we find the inner strength to pursue our dreams and goals with determination and focus. And in doing so, we create a life of greater meaning and depth, aligned with the stoic principles of virtue, wisdom and grace. And self-mastery in the vast field of human relationships, we find an incontrovertible truth, the need to set clear boundaries to protect our space and our inner peace. We often come across people who, driven by curiosity or the desire to give an opinion, go beyond these limits. They express their thoughts unfiltered, claiming honesty, but they forget that respect and consideration are essential pillars of any healthy interaction. Setting boundaries in our relationships is an act of self-worth. Those who speak thoughtlessly often slip up, expose themselves unduly, and sometimes cause irreparable harm. Epictetus, one of the luminaries of Stoicism, offers us a valuable perspective. Everything has two handles, one you can control and one you can't. We don't have control over the actions of others, but we can choose how to respond to them. When someone crosses our boundaries, our response is what determines the impact of that transgression. Approaching the person clearly and firmly, expressing our feelings without aggressiveness, is a way to protect our space and educate others on the proper way to treat us. Setting boundaries is above all an act of self-care. Acknowledging what is acceptable in our interactions and communicating it in a respectful way strengthens our relationships and protects us from negative influences. Epictetus illustrates this idea with a simple but powerful analogy. Does anyone smoke at home? If he smokes moderately, he stays. If it's too much, I'll leave. It reminds us that we need to be stewards of our own well-being, making decisions that protect our emotional and mental health. The practice of silence is a valuable tool in the art of setting boundaries. Often we feel the need to explain ourselves, seeking approval or understanding. However, silence can be a more powerful response. Not only does it preserve our energy, but it also prevents unnecessary misunderstandings and conflicts. 
Stoicism teaches us the importance of keeping certain information to ourselves. Epictetus advises us if you drink water, don't count everything you drink. This means living simply and reservedly without the need to share every detail of our life. By adopting this stance, we strengthen our character and preserve our energy for what really matters. The balance between speaking and silence is crucial. Saying too little can alienate us from others, but talking too much can expose us and create problematic situations. Plato offers us a valuable lesson in emotional control. When confronted with a situation that made him angry, he realized that he was not in a position to handle it fairly and asked a servant to solve the problem. This shows that even the greatest sages recognized the importance of controlling emotions before acting or speaking. If we don't control our silence, we become slaves to our words. By speaking impulsively, especially when we are emotional, we run the risk of revealing plans and thoughts that should remain private until they are fully formed. Learning the art of silence and setting boundaries is essential for a balanced and serene life. As Epictetus teaches us, we must always remember that we have the power to choose our reactions and preserve our inner peace. Silence is not just the absence of words, but a deep and powerful form of communication that connects us with our essence and allows us to interact with the world in a more conscious and respectful way. Cultivating this practice helps us build healthier relationships and live with more wisdom and balance. But in some cases, many of us in moments of anger or impulsiveness throw out words that hurt deeply, leaving scars that cannot be erased. As Marcus Aurelius rightly said, never say that something is impossible because limits are learned from your explanations. These words reflect the essence of Stoicism, which teaches the importance of controlling our words and actions, especially in moments of intense emotion. By retreating into silence, we gain the opportunity to reflect and organize our thoughts before acting, allowing us to respond wisely rather than react impulsively. Silence is not just the absence of words, but a deliberate practice that allows us to absorb information with clarity and insight. Epictetus, the Stoic philosopher, teaches us that when you have the habit of making me stronger, you sometimes believe people in order to learn from you. But how can I learn to be silent? It seems like a silly question, but many people struggle or even struggle with those who claim to know they fall into life's traps and end up exposing themselves on the path to self-improvement. An essential practice is to learn to master silence. It's not just about not talking. It's about cultivating a deep skill of self-mastery and self-knowledge to begin with training for silence begins with constant self-observation. It is essential to be aware of our emotional impulses and the tendency to react immediately in challenging situations. Imagine yourself in a heated discussion. Instead of responding in the heat of the moment, we can learn to pause, take a deep breath, and allow our thoughts to organize themselves before formulating a response. Not only does this avoid unnecessary conflict, but it also promotes clearer and more respectful communication. Another valuable technique is the practice of active listening. Often, while others are talking, we are already planning what to answer. However, by practicing genuine listening, we can better understand the other's point of view and respond more effectively and empathetically. This strengthens relationships and improves the quality of both personal and professional interactions. In addition, taking moments for mindful silence can be transformative. This can be done through daily meditation or by simply taking a few minutes out of the day to be in a state of mental stillness without outside distractions. These moments of silence allow us to calm the mind, gain clarity of thought and strengthen our capacity for introspection. The benefits of mastering silence are vast and impact many areas of our lives. First of all, it helps to preserve relationships as we avoid unnecessary conflicts and promote more harmonious and effective communication. In the professional environment, for example, knowing how to listen more than speaking can result in more thoughtful and collaborative decisions, contributing to a more productive and harmonious work environment. 
On a personal level, silence promotes greater self-awareness and emotional self-control. By learning not to react impulsively to negative emotions such as anger or frustration, we develop greater emotional resilience and an ability to deal with adversity in a constructive way. This strengthens our inner peace and improves our quality of life. Silence is also a powerful tool for spiritual and intellectual growth. Through quiet reflection, we can explore deep ideas, question our assumptions, and develop a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. This allows us to grow not only as individuals, but also as conscious members of the global community that is practicing. Silence is not just a matter of not talking, but rather of cultivating an attitude of active listening, self-control, and introspection. By incorporating these practices into our daily lives, we not only improve our relationships and decisions, but we also enrich our journey of self-discovery and personal growth. Today we explore together the powerful influence of silence in our lives and how it can shape our interactions and our personal growth. Now I want to hear from you. How has silence helped you in challenging moments? Are you willing to practice the reflections we've shared here? Leave your comment below and share your experiences and thoughts. Always remember, true wisdom begins with the ability to listen, reflect and act with serenity. Keep seeking the path of inner peace and balance.